Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video, because today I figured I'd show you the aftermath of the grinding. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it, because it's going to be a lot of spinning the damn wheel. Um, if you don't know, this is the Lotto event, and this is the reason why we always say grind it a whole bunch. I didn't grind it this many, this much this year, but I feel like I always do that for this specific Lotto, because the one I actually need, <laughs> the one I need is the next one. I have plenty of this, of these skill ups. I think, anyway. Actually, this might be the one. Damn it, I may have made a mistake. But either way, I usually save it for Christmas time. So, I'm gonna jump in here. And that's gonna be today's video. You guys can tell me how you spent your time kind of unwinding from the lotto. Because let me tell you, sometimes the part of getting rid of all your lotto is just as time-intensive as actually grinding all of them out. Uh, for this event, I, again, focused on a lot of quick stuff. I think Pravati was used at one point, but for the most part, I just stuck with Dantes for the entire thing of it. Um, the only thing was annoying was that final stage where occasionally the second person would survive. And sometimes I would just get bad card draws into, like, more Scotty. Like I did at that point. That's the the one thing I don't like about having him just MP1. I wish he was too, so I could get a little bit more damage out of him. But it's perfectly fine. He works perfectly fine, and he's con extremely consistent if you know what you do when certain dead ends pop up and stuff. So that's another one down. Switchy, switchy. Next replenished. So yeah, what is uh so what is what are some things I did for this? Well, first of all, on the last day, I actually went to go see Shang Chi in theaters, uh, which was pretty fun. I'm not gonna say any spoilers, so don't worry about it. But it was an extremely fun movie. I liked it a whole bunch. Um, good stuff, good action, good characters, good villain. Basically, the trifecta that basically makes it a almost perfect MCU movie, because most MCU movies don't even have those. A lot of it for me depends on, is the villain good, are the characters good, and is it fun? And for the most part, sometimes they get like two out of three. Some of the very bad ones get one out of three, and some of the worst ones get like none of them. Just like an absolutely mis mishandling of all people involved, but I digress. Um, what else was I watching? It was mainly it was a lot of that. I. That and, like, cons not conspiracy videos, because that's going to make me seem weird, but lost media videos, that's what I was trying to say. Sometimes it can feel like conspiracy videos, because I don't know if you guys have ever seen videos dedicated to the subject of lost media, but it's fascinating stuff, especially if you're someone who... And well, sometimes I see the stuff they talk about, and I wasn't alive for that era, but other times it is stuff where I'm like, yeah, this thing you may have watched when I was a kid, I'm like, yeah, I remember that. He's like, it's lost. Nobody knows where the hell it is. And it's an extremely fascinating look of, like, trying to get people's memory correct, but some people remember things slightly wrong, and there's always the chance that... Memory is such a fickle thing that I don't think a lot of people realize, is that the, the problem with memories is that memories themselves are a, um... unreliable narrator, because they can actually be warped. And depending on... If you believe it hard enough that you believe this is how the events of something happened in your memory, it will actually become like that. So it's actually kind of very screwy as someone who has occasionally done that where I'm like, I remember one thing, but then another friend goes like, I don't remember that at all. I don't remember those specific details. And the reason is, is that over time you start to think like, yeah, I think this is how it went. And then it overwrites the memory itself. Which is, so when you're trying to put all those memories together to find a specific case of lost media and you're tracking down people who chances are even older than the than your memories themselves and they're like, oh yeah, I think I do remember this. Um, what's the most? What's one of the very interesting case? I think at the, at the time I usually watch a lot of uh, Blame It On George, I believe is how you pronounce his name. I always want to say Jorge, but I believe it's Blame It On George. That is how you usually say it. Uh, he's very good at what he does. Very much feels like a documentary style feel. Um, and I actually really like documentaries as well, now that I say it. But that's why I think I, was, I can also get into them, because they really get into the nitty gritty. And it's always great, because they're always like... 
This was started, so a discord was started, and then a startling revelation of potentially where it was found was found by Dripmaster62. And then they have, like, pictures of Dripmaster and someone very dramatically reading Dripmaster42's recounts of his specific, like, memories of the account, and it's, I don't know, I think it's very fun, and it's a very cool look into, like, oh yeah. And then there's also different, like, lost media scenes themselves, similar to how, like, I guess the gotcha scenes kind of break down. Like, obviously, there's the Fago. In Fago, we have the NA community, but there's probably also a French community, the Chinese community, which is dealing with its own set of problems right now, uh, and the Japanese community, when they're all kind of broken up into sectors and they don't really interact for the most cases, and they have different means and they have different kind of styles of things. So for there's a lost media scene here, but then over in Mexico there's a lost media scene, there's all kinds of things, because different people show different things on their specific, like, site, so... Um, it can be a little bit funky when trying to find, like, lost media that was spe specifically, like, in... Where, like, for example, where Penta was from, I believe it is Finland, unless I remember? Yeah, he's Finnish, right? Yeah, his accent sounds Finnish. Anyway, I really hope I remember Penta's <laughs> nationality because I made fun of it for years. Well, not made fun of it, like, you know, poked fun at it, but you get what I'm saying. Um, like, they'll go over there and it's like, I, I don't know, This some of this stuff is in a language I don't understand. And we're kind of communicating between two different time zones trying to find it. And it can be actually very tough. And then a lot of other times it, you can start lost media case files based off of, like, what is one of them? Sato Sanabashi, which is a dark web anime someone claimed to have seen on 4chan. And it was an extremely messed up, basically, art, borderline saw, borderline art film style of anime approach to something. Like a bunch of Japanese schoolgirls trapped inside a basement or something? Not a basement, a. Like the opening. The way I always saw it is like the opening. Uh, trap from Saw 1 where the two dudes are in it. I always assumed it was something like that and they're like discussing philosophy and then they end up like beating the shit out of each other and murdering each other and stuff like that. So it all started with some post on 4chan with someone that, oh yeah, it was an enemy on the deep web and then people were like, whoa man, I want to see that and then it started this whole thing of like, I don't know if we can find it and then it's like... And then there's a whole other branching where one person claiming to be the original poster says like, oh no man, I made that shit up. Because some dude was asking, what's your favorite site on the dark web? And he was an idiot on 4chan looking for a genuine answer, so I gave him a troll answer. But because it's 4chan related, no one actually knows if it's real or not. So it's like, this guy could be the dude, but also he could very well not be the dude, so who knows. Uh, in that case, I totally don't believe in it. This seems unlikely. Who the hell puts an anime up on the dark web? This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But it is a very interesting story, and the way it is presented is in a way that's like... Oh yeah, that's cool. Because even in documentaries, I can easily listen to documentaries of things I either think are dumb or don't understand in some cases. That was like a really good Monopoly documentary. Um that I saw that I was like, oh yeah, because it was like tournament play Monopoly, and no one ever thinks about tournament play Monopoly. Like, <laughs> who in the world <laughs> thinks about tournament play Monopoly in some way? That's the, like, I play with family and the rules are loose. It's whatever you can kind of get away with in some cases. And so to kind of get a glimpse behind it, and then also kind of actually learn how the hell you play it in tournament rule, because in my mind it's like, well, if you're doing a tournament, that shit's gonna take like, what, seven hours? For one game? And it's like, no, dude. When you play with the actual official rules, you can easily finish Monopoly in under an hour. It's like, that's insane. In my mind, Monopoly is that game that takes forever. Like, you play it for the entire day, basically. And you're done. Uh, oh shit. I got it wrong here. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of fun. There's not only, uh... There's not only you know, lost media stuff on old TVs and movies and stuff. There's also games, because there's some games that have been lost to time. Because game archiving is extremely terrible. I don't know if you've ever heard the case of... Um, when they tried to remaster Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 3. 
it was they had to start from basically scratch because they lost the master file of Silent Hill. So what happened was is that no one from Team Silent that was there from back in the day still worked at Konami. So I don't think anyone at Konami ever saved the um, master files of it because they're like, when are we ever gonna release Silent Hill two and three again? It's just it just didn't happen. Like when when Metal Gear Solid did their HD remaster, that was the first time someone was like, "Oh yeah, we can remaster our stuff." Okay, and they'll pay for it again because it's a little bit updated. Okay, we can do this. Make it look a little nicer, a little bit more presentable. Maybe change some of the controls. But it worked for Metal Gear Solid because everyone from Metal Gear Solid team, fan like uh, Kojima and stuff, were still there. So it was very easy for them to kind of. You know, do it. Um, but when it came to Konami, when it came to Silent Hill, Silent Hill team by that point had been completely um, disintegrated. Not no one from that original team worked there. No one who worked on the original three games were there. I think even four. I'll go that go that far. Um, but the important one would be two and three because that's the one they were looking for. Oh, excuse me. So yeah, it was lost and. That HD remaster was fucking terrible. But that's crazy to think about, right? Silent Hill is like one of the most decorated horror franchises out there. It's it and Resident Evil as far as many people are concerned. And that original stuff of it is just gone. <laughs> Forever. I can't imagine living such a life. Let me see if I can quickly change my format a little bit. There we go. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit easier on me. Yeah, it's kind of hard to think about, like, some of the archive stuff, and then they get on the people who emulate games' this case of being like, oh no, you're the reason our games don't sell, and you know, you're killing the business, and it's like, you're not even trying to save the business that you live in, sir, so don't try and come to me saying that I'm putting food off of your table when you fucking destroy the dishes as soon as the food's done eating. It's insane to me, but, you know, obviously it is a two-way street of... I mean, if the video game industry was amazing at um, archiving its games, and I think there would be less call for emulation. But they're not, really. They're terrible at it. It's just absolutely terrible. So that's why there's a lot of the lost media related to games and stuff. For the longest time, I want to say that there was a missing, like... For, <laughs> lost media of... Oh, let me see if I'm reaching close to the limit. I am, so I have to actually dump some of this stuff. Excuse me. Quick detour. Time to dump. Dumping. Sell. No. Okay. Uh, shop. Burning cell. Dum, dum, dum. No, I don't want to get rid of that many foes. There we go. 108, baby. All gone. Let me take them. Love World Da Vinci here. Again, my inventory is full once again. My cup runneth over with such delights. Alright, I think after this I should be good for good for the remainder of them. Really? Okay. There we go. Whatever take One day I'll learn what that means. No one tell me what that means. I have to learn it for myself. Uh, no. <laughs> not that. I will do that eventually, but not now. The end. 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 The The end. The end. The end. The end. The end. The that's a good girl. She's... I... Uh, uh, servant for her when? That's my question. 
I also feel like a lot of Damood's lines are going to be lost, but it's fine. I think there's a archive of them somewhere. YouTube somewhere out there doing stuff. What was I talking about? The archival efforts of the video game industry and how terrible it is? Yeah, it's very bad. But... Oh, well, what are we going to do about it? Emulate games. There you go. Till the other time. That's the only answer. I guess you could say emulated games in some way is responsible for always online because that's and microtransactions because it's like, hey, you're gonna emulate this sixty dollar game, you may as well pay us some extra money if you're here. But that then there's then that frame of mind is like, why not make it free to play? And then the free to play ones are like, well, we're ten times worse. We're gotchas actually. Hello, fake randor. And <laughs> they're terrible on you. They prey on you in so many ways. It's all a sad situation, so... Yeah. No, I was talking about the, it was a Mean Girls DS game. They were looking for the Mean Girls DS, which was... Archi not archived, but it was more like they weren't sure if it was ever actually released. Because they are like, yeah, there's like a Mean Girls of like print ads describing it, but we don't think it was ever actually released, but there had to be releases of it. Because there's screenshots, so it has to exist somewhere. And it turns out there was, and they found a DS copy of it. They're like, oh my god, now we're gonna play Mean Girls. And they also asked the game company, and they're like, we have no idea where the hell that thing would be for us. So good luck with that one. So yeah, Mean Girls was saved because of that. It is pretty funny to think of, like, oh yeah. And then, you know, the quality of the game does not matter in some cases. All games should be archived in some manner. And that's kind of, uh, it's not technically an archival process, but Primal Rage 2 was kind of like that too. But that was more screwed over by, you know, people and the people at the company, which I believe was Sega, who bought them afterwards, who just shit on them for no reason. That sounds like Sega back in the 90s, or late 90s I should say, because it wasn't them when Sonic got big. It was them during the Sonic CD days. Which you could probably... Is that fair to say the Sega CD is the start of the fall of Sonic? I might actually go one further and say Sega. No, it was the third add-on to the Sega Genesis that was the start of the fall. And then the Sega Saturn didn't help that either. It's hard sometimes. You know, people make fun of Nintendo, rightfully so, because they make a lot of peripheral peripherals. But so did Sega back in the day, and that's what kind of screwed them over. I guess the difference is that... Nintendo knows exactly how far to push something, and how far not to, I guess. But it is funny to think about, in some cases, at least. Oh god. Oh no. Alright, let me fix this. I'll be right back. Okay, everything's fixed. Back to the spinny! Okay. Um... What do I want to talk about now? Lost media stuff... The... Yes, game. It actually is kind of crazy to think about um, that there was a Mean Girls DS game. But if you actually look back to the library of the DS, it is just filled with that kind of stuff. And to be fair, some of the best gaming libraries are filled with a lot of crap. And the reason is, is that they're popular. So everyone knows, oh, let's release a game for this specific console. And we can perf be perfectly fine. Like, for example, Xbox, original Xbox, has plenty of bad games. But they're not in the same metric fuck ton of value that when you compare it to, like, the PS2. And the same thing, too, actually. If you combine the bad games of the GameCube and the Xbox, I don't think it even makes one-tenth of the PS2. And the reason is, is that the PS2 was insanely popular, and it was the top console to be, man. You could not compare... Like, I what did Nintendo... GameCube have, like, Smash Brothers maybe as their best game? Some people would say Sunshine. I wouldn't say Sunshine personally, but some people probably would. Like, I can't really... Th like, I love my GameCube. Like, I think the best GameCube game is probably, for me, is probably Sales of Symphonia. I think that's the game I played most. It's between that and Smash Brothers, to be honest. And I'm not even one of those Smash Brothers people who plays it for, like, hardcore. I'm one of those people that just play it for the fun of the game. And I feel like... Um, on that merit alone, it's probably one of the best GameCube games out there. But then for the Xbox, what do you have? You have, I think, Halo 2? 
Yeah, I think Halo 2. Many would consider Halo 2. Halo 2 Jet Set Radio Future. Amazing. Force. But then you get to the PS2 and it's like, oh yeah, God of War, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter. So it's a killer's row, if you're if I'm being honest here. Of just amazing PS2 games and never stopped. Persona was on it, Persona 4 and 3 were um PlayStation not exclusives, more like they just only released on the PlayStation 2. Because what funny thing is that back in the day, Atlas used to release their games on old generation consoles, but during the peak of when a lot of people would have them. So they actually wouldn't move on to the third the to the next gen for years because they would be like, no man, there's still people with the old shit. Then they they need more games and there's a buttload of them with it, and as long as we keep releasing games for them, they'll buy it. And they were right. <laughs> they were one hundred percent right. So that's kinda where it's hard to think about, but yeah, the Persona 4 launched deep into the PS3's life cycle. Not deep, I guess it was like what, two or three years at that point. So, but it was pretty funny. And to be fair, if it was a PS3 game, I don't think I would have played it. Because it was on the PS2, because I didn't have a PS3 back in the time. I mean, no one had a PS3 at launch. Only rich ass people or people who would know money sense had a PS3 at launch. That shit sucks. Apparently you can run Linux. It's one of the very few PS3 devices. At some point they kick Linux off of the platform. And then I think they got sued for it as well. Kind of funny to think about, but yeah, when they made that promise, they were like, Oh yeah, we can, we can run Linux. It would have been just easier for them to say, No, we deny this, but they didn't. Classic Sony, right? Backtracking on what they say. They like to do that a lot. And I think I've said it before, I think the, the worst person to have w as a winning company, I think it has to go to straight up Sony, even though I don't think Sony's actually... I mean, winning is in quotes because the Switch got super fucking popular. When the pandemic started, people were going crazy buying Switches, and no one can buy a PS5 because they'll get stolen by bots, unfortunately. I guess that's more, to be fair, so do Switches and so do Xbox, X-Bones and all the other stuff. Probably not a great idea to launch during a pandemic. Actually, did it launch during the pandemic? I don't think it did. Why the fuck is it so hard to find a PS5? Ah, uh, again. You know, bots. Automatically buying my shit. Hate it. I mean, we have a PS5 here, so that should show you what I'm talking about, at least. If you think I'm one of those people who are like, me, me, me. I technically own all three consoles. I will gladly play whatever system has the good games on it. But I think all three deserve equal amounts of shit for stuff. Microsoft, because it is Microsoft, even though I think they are doing fantastic. I actually think they're doing probably better than Nintendo. Because Nintendo may occasionally release games I like, but Jesus, that Game Pass is just hard to deny. Especially if you're someone who lives on a very frugal way of spending money. The Game Pass offers you so much compared to like fucking Nintendo's offerings, which is like... I don't know, here's uh, Eat em, Beat 'em and Eat 'em and Super Mario Bros. 3 for your month's games this year. And it's also the NES version, it's not even the Super Nintendo version. Because the Super Nintendo version technically lives inside of uh, Mario All-Stars. So just having the ability, and then there, and it's not only old games, it's new games that get put on Game Pass, and that's yeah. awesome. And new, new games specific, like I was able to play Psychonauts 2 for free and not pay the $60, are you kidding me? That's, that paid for all the times I had Game Pass this year. It's just an insane value to me. So yeah, I really like that. And then I probably would put Sony last, just because I don't know what the hell they're doing. They have terrible ways of importing the PS4 stuff to PS5. I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. Actually, I do know what they're thinking. We're the number one console people. Oh, Microsoft will never catch up. It doesn't matter that that's what happened. The last time we said this, this totally happened. They're just lucky. They're like one generation off, I think. If they keep the same mindset. But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe the cult of personality will follow them. But you know, it can only you can only ask so much of them. 
I wonder actually if the PS3 was revealed today in modern times for the price that it released in, which was 599 US dollars, which with inflation must mean that that shit was worth way more now. Especially since it was only like, what, 100 gigabytes in it? Think about that for a while. Yeah, it's hard to think about. But, um... Yeah, I wonder how many people would be chomping at the bit going like, Oh yeah, give me that PS3. Love it. Doesn't have any games on it, but, you know, whatever. And all its uh, built-in systems suck ass. Compared to the 360, which has red ringed on me, but let me tell you, this online server is fantastic. Yeah, it also wasn't fantastic, but it was better than what PS3 had, which was what important. And then, funny enough, the, the part where I feel like the PS3 started doing better to the 360 is when the first time the PlayStation Plus was actually out and it was like offering good shit and you were like oh my god and the internet and the online play is free that's amazing this is a fantastic deal I get Darksiders 1 and <laughs> some other stuff I don't have to worry about online because back in the day you had to pay for online with Microsoft now unfortunately <laughs> what happened was is that now everyone makes you pay for online and all their internet is shit. I don't know how the fuck they convince people it's okay to pay for their internet like that. I already pay my internet. I don't need to pay double for my goddamn internet. But they roll it into like the stuff that gives you the free games and stuff, so it's like, alright, whatever. Except for the Microsoft. They don't, but I play most of my stuff on PC, so I don't care. Like, oh yeah, I play all my Microsoft games on my PC. So what do I care? Almost done, folks. This is the true lotto experience, by the way. Oh wait, let me see what my current... Yeah, let me second archive some stuff. Start the process all over again. Ooh, I have enough mana prisms now. Mote mi Exchange mana prisms, please. There we go. Oh, that's unfortunate. Let me click on them first. Mm-hmm, I'll keep selling. I really don't need any of this three stuff. So I think that's enough now, though. For how much I have left, I think that's enough for now. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. 169, baby. Alright, let's go back. Back to the event. Alright, back on Clicky on the Sheepy. Um, the fuck was I talking about? Oh. Hmm, something about PS3, PS... The people buy the PS3 in today's day and age. I don't know, I'd actually be very interested to see, because I think people would... I don't know if people are dumber now, but they're definitely more tribalistic now. So maybe they'll... I mean, I... I, in, in my mind, it, it shouldn't be such a thing where it's like a bad deal. Even if you're a fan of something, a bad deal is a bad fucking deal. People, I don't know, they treat it so fucking weird. People are God, so goddamn weird where it's like, oh, you're a big fan of this, you must support this. No. Then why are you a fan of them? I'm like, because I fucking like their stuff. I don't know what the fuck you want from me, man. Don't you fucking come at me with your high and mighty fucking attitude. Because if you're going to start telling me that something I like is in some way problematic, then let me tell you right now, so do you. 
Here's the difference. We don't talk about it. It's very simple. The talking about it does not actually help anyone. Because it's not like Nintendo is going to change. It's not like Sony's going to change. Funny enough, Microsoft might change. Because they don't have a choice because they're in third place. So they'll listen. But people in first and second, no. Well, not even first and second because Nintendo's in their own fucking ecosystem. I think they're fighting <laughs> Steam. Which I doubt that's going to end very well for Steam, but whatever. They have plenty of games, that's for sure. Their their infrastructure is shit. I can tell you that much from someone who's been using Steam for a very long time. A lot of their shit is, uh, sucks. There's no way to hide it. There's no way to sugarcoat that. The, the, it, you, in any given day, I'll find either a very cool game or porn. Sometimes it's both. It's actually kind of crazy that they've just started allowing <gasps> one box and some extras on the side. We're almost here at the end, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I should do? I should... Is there a button to just let sheep? Yes, there is. There's not what? There's no button that just lets me full. There it is. For brief moments. Alright. Back at it. Oh, the end. I keep clicking him and saying the end. Yeah, I get to deal with this all again. So if you're ever someone who's like, man, Lotto Grind, what is it like? It's a lot of this. <gasps> and I'm done. Thank you, everyone, for watching the video. If you made it this far, can of coke for you, that's for sure. I have a lot of stuff to go through. Oh, yeah, talk to me, girl. But I will see you all in the next video. Happy end of Lotto. Take a break, you animals. <laughs> Goodbye.